Hello, everybody. My name is Cole. Hello. 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 Are we there? We're there. Hello, everybody. <laughs> my name is Cole. My name is Katie. And my name is Mackenzie. And welcome to the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab. That's right. This is the Couch Potato Lab, the show where we bring the science right to your own home. And we have a very, very special um, uh, episode today that I'm definitely looking forward to if you <laughs> if you get get my drift there now uh, what you should be looking for right now is the lab manual for today's activities and you can find that at bit.ly slash couch potato lab there's actually two lab manuals in one today because we're we have such a jam-packed episode we've got two activities it's gonna be really really fun another thing that you should do is make sure if you have any questions if you have any comments you can text us at 306 uh, 570 1013 you could tweet us at hashtag couch potato lab on Twitter you can follow us at eyes youth on all kinds of social media we've got Instagram Facebook YouTube Twitter and TikTok. and like I said we are looking forward to today's episode because today's episode is all about vision and I know I spy with my little eye two very very excellent scientists who are joining me today on the couch potato lab who is that I spy over to my left Yes, thank you, Cole. Hello, everybody. My name is Katie. My pronouns are she, her. And my fun fact for today is that I am wearing contact lenses because I can't see with an, uh, without uh, like contact lenses or glasses. And they actually produce like a little blue ring on the outside of my eye. And you can't really see it here. But yeah, that's my fun fact for today. Interesting. Nice. Thank you very much, Katie. Yeah. Um, like I said, my name is Cole. My pronouns are he and him. And a fun fact about me, if you remember, um, I guess not remember because you, you probably are a child if, if, if you're watching this. But um, when, my, when I was younger, my parents would always say that I should be careful because they have eyes in the back of their head and they can always mm -hmm. see what I'm doing. But the thing is about me, I literally do have eyes in the back of my head. That's why I keep my hair longer back there so that nobody can see them. But when I need to, I flip up my mullet and I can see everything behind me. It's very, very cool. Who's over there uh, on the right side here? Well, thank you, Cole. My name is Mackenzie. My pronouns are she, her. And a fun fact about me is that I have very good eyes, or I think I do. I guess we'll test that out today. But I've always wanted glasses so much that when I was younger, one Halloween, I dressed up as a nerd just so I could wear the glasses because I love them so much. So I went to that 3D movie. I popped out those lenses and there, there you go. I had my glasses that I've always wanted. Real wow. commitment, Mackenzie. Yeah, it's I true. I respect that, Mackenzie. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely do. Well, I we should tarry no further, I believe, and let's get into the episode. But um, Katie Mackenzie, I have a bit of a confession. It's a little bit embarrassing, though. Uh, what's oh, what's okay, that? Let's hear it. Well, it's just... Um, I can't read my script. I, I, I can't see anything. I don't know what's going on, but I woke up today and I'm having a lot of trouble seeing. And, and I don't know what lines to say. I don't know what I, what I should be doing. I, I'm just scared I'm going to mess the show up. What do you? Cool. I can see them. I can see them just fine. Cool. You can't see? I, I'm having trouble. I don't know what there is to do. Like I, Maybe I have some sort of vision problem. I don't know. Ooh. There, well, there's only one way to test this. Katie, do you think we should do it? Should I we think bring we out should. The thing? Yeah, oh we, no. we have a chart, so I guess we could pull that up. And Cole, I want you to look at this chart and see uh, which letters you can read from this. Okay, Start all right. at the very top left Okay. just keep reading down, just like a book. Okay, start at the top left. Yeah. I see a C for Cole. Okay. And an O for Ol. That's the second part of my name. Oh, and yeah. then an H. That's not in my name. And then a Z and a V. Okay. And then Good. the second line, I think that's an L. Oh. Ooh, oh. Is it an L? And then no. a Q, and then an R, and then a P, and then an F. Got it. That's easy. Oh. This is so easy. This is simple. Cool. Um, you know, the thing is, is that those weren't quite the right letters. You did really good at the top, but then the letters got smaller, and I don't think you could see them very well. Maybe that's why you couldn't read your script. So oh. I don't know. I think that we need to f maybe investigate what could be going wrong and how our vision and light and all that works. Yeah, I think that would help. I mean, I think if I had a better understanding of how the eye actually worked and maybe some parts of the eye, I would be able to sort of fix my own problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Katie, could you tell me a little bit more about how the eye actually works? 
Yeah, yeah, I think I can. Uh, and before we get into that, we just wanted to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 4 territory, which is the traditional territory of the Neowak, Nakaway, Dakota, Nakota, and Lakota peoples, as well as the traditional homeland of the Métis Michif Nation. So we're grateful to be sharing this land with these peoples. And we also recognize the diversity of our audience so that you may be watching this live stream from other numbered treaties or from unceded territory. So thank you for taking a moment to recognize this with us. And yes, Cole, I would love to dive in uh, to the eye a little bit closer mm -hmm. and so Mackenzie and I brought that chart for you to test your vision we also brought this image right here we're gonna put it up on the screen and this is exactly how an eye works so it's it's clear as mud right um yeah you could say that I see sort of a, a red ball looking thing and it looks like I, I, I know at least I can see that light has something to do with it yeah, yeah, exactly. You got it, Cole. And uh, it is a little bit complex. It's actually a picture of our eye. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to break this down and we're going to look at each of the individual parts. So the first part we're going to start with is our cornea. So that cornea is that clear outer part on our eye and it helps to bend and focus the light. And you can see that light is hitting our eye and it's going through uh, the iris and specifically it's going through the pupil. So uh, if we want to take a look over here at my desk, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show a little demonstration. So once the eye hits or once the light hits our eye, it goes through our pupil. Now, I know what you're thinking. This pupil is this like little black spot, right? Well, the pupil is actually a hole. And so light is able to go through it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this flashlight and I'm going to uh, shine this light through this uh, paper towel roll here and I want you to see so you can kind of see their viewers very bright very very mm -hmm. bright it mm -hmm. is very bright so you're able to s so this is demonstrating uh, a pupil that is uh, very it's open it's very wide open we don't have anything that's blocking this but how does the pupil constrict and dilate you're asking right well, it's actually the iris. And the iris is the colored part of your eye. So you may have blue eyes, green eyes, brown eyes. That iris is actually what is uh, controlling how big that hole is. Okay, so if we look at this, we saw a lot of light coming through this paper towel roll. So are we able to constrict that? If we take some of this, and if I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to kind of stuff it into here. So now this is representing our iris constricting a little bit more. So if I go ahead and I shine this light through. Oh, yeah. It's a lot it's less It's blocking bright. some of that light, it looks like. Exactly. You can see that it is a lot less uh, bright because... <laughs> we have our iris that is constricting represented by the paper towels here so that's exactly how our eye works as well our iris is going to kind of close and open that pupil to let more light less light in so if i go outside and it's really bright and sunny outside i don't need as much light because there's already a lot of light coming into my eye but if i am going to sleep and i turn off my lights I need that pupil to be bigger in order to get more light into uh, my eye so that I'm able to see in the dark. So that's the cornea, iris, and the pupil all kind of working together to control the amount of light that's coming in. Does that make sense, Cole? That does. That does. It's starting to become a little bit clearer. And actually, I think we have a video, a really cool video of how this pupil actually does contract and expand in um, respect to the, the lighting conditions. And this is something you can actually see on your own eyes at home. Uh, sometimes like if you go into the bathroom and it's dark and you put your face really close to the mirror and then you switch on the light, you can see your eye and your pupil actually changing. So let's take a look at this video here where we can see um, a person's eye actually changing with respect to light being shone on. So we've got the pupil there and you can see it's already, it's moving a little bit. The light is off now. And what we should see is, yes, as soon as that, um, that light is turned on, our pupil shrink, shrinks, okay? So the light's off again. The pupil has expanded, although we can't really see it. 
And if they turn the light back on, we can see the pupil shrink. So again, this is a really, really cool thing that our eyes are able to do to help um, adjust depending on the light conditions around us, okay? So when we go outside, our pupil shrinks because there's lots of light usually. When we come back inside, it might expand so that we can let a little bit more light in. So Katie talked about the pupil and the cornea and the iris and how those work together to get light into our eye. But that's not the only thing that has to do with light in our eye. Our, our uh, eye, sorry, also has something called a lens. All right. Now the lens does exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really sound like it, do, it does anything now that I say that. But a lens, <laughs> a lens helps to focus light. Okay. So as the light comes in through our pupil and uh, our pupil is dilated depending on the size it's going to focus us, uh, focus that light into a, a smaller point so that we can get a really, really sharp image when we see. And the next part of our eye, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, is the thing that's actually kind of sensing that focused image. Now, lenses are in our eyes, but there's lenses everywhere. If we have glasses, that is a form of lens. Um, a camera has a lens. A microscope has a lens. And actually, our lovely crew here is going to help us demonstrate what it would be like if our lenses weren't working properly. So a lens will change its shape depending on how much we, if we want to bring things into focus. So right now, the cameras uh, with our crew here, we're going to bring my face, we're going to bring our shot out of focus. And you can see I'm going to start to become really fuzzy and blurry. So this is what it might look like if your vision, if you were having vision problems, if the, there was a problem with your lens and it wasn't able to focus the light. And if we bring the camera back into focus, you can imagine I'm going to start getting uh, a little bit sharper, a little bit more details, and you can make out my lovely face even better. So the lens inside of our eye works basically the exact same way, focusing the light that's hitting it into a single point, um, which hits another part of our eye so that we can actually see. All right. So we've talked about the pupil and the cornea and the iris and the lens. Mackenzie, do we have another part of the eye that we still have to go through? Yes. So we're getting towards the very end. So what happens there is after it goes through um, that pupil and through that lens, it's now it's a focused image. So what happens next is that light goes and gets redirected through the to the retina and the retina is at the very back of our eye and we're going to make sure that that light hits it so that we can send it up through the optic nerve so i'm going to demonstrate this by using a mirror here it's a little bit dirty i see but in the middle here i have a part and it's called the retina now i'm going to use just a little laser um, you can see it here on my desk there so what's happening is we're going to have um, that light come through and that image come through and then it's going to hit the retina and what happens when it hits the retina there it goes and it starts to become an image that we can understand and interpret so it takes it from those that image that's kind of meaningless and puts it into a message that we can understand so that we can kind of interpret what we're seeing and then as soon as it hits that retina and it is converted into a signal that we can understand it gets sent through that optic nerve up to our brain where we use the information that we're seeing to um, kind of interpret and make meaningful um, decisions and stuff based on what we're seeing so it all works together to get up to our brain so that we can make sense of everything we're seeing now what's really interesting is we're actually seeing a bunch of still images all at once but what we're doing is we're going to put those all together and we're going to perceive them as one image so we have a constant shot so it doesn't look like just a bunch of still images put together our brain perceives them together to make a um like a constant movement, motion, um, what we're seeing. That's very interesting, Mackenzie. Thank you very much. Now, so what I'm learning is that the eye is a lot more complicated than I initially understood. There's a lot going on. And not only that, the eye is connected to the brain, and there's probably stuff going on in the brain that we're going to get to in a second. But if you have any questions at home about how the eye works, remember, you can always text us at 306-570-1013, or you can go on Twitter and tweet us with the hashtag CouchPotatoLab and ask us a question or send us a picture of the activity that you're working on. But also make sure to follow us at EyesYouth. We are on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Now, Katie, Mackenzie, it's starting to become a little bit more clear, but this last part that you were talking about, Mackenzie, with the, um, the retina and the optic nerve and these refraction and reflection, that stuff is kind of losing me. I'm still a little bit confused. Is there any way that you could demonstrate that to me again? Yeah, of course, Cole. We actually have a little game that we can play, and sometimes this helps us understand um, how we're going to redirect those rays and those images into a spot where we want it to hit, so that target retina. So what we're going to do is me and Katie have a bunch of little mirrors here, and then we both also have a little laser pointer. And we're going to each come up with a little course, 
and we're going to um, try to get our laser pointer we're gonna have to use different angles so we can hit our target so mm -hmm. I'm gonna set up my target and then we're gonna have to set up the mirrors so that we can use instead of just pointing at it right here I'm gonna want to hit some mirrors and then so it hits the target Interesting. now to get there if I'm pointing it here what happens is this is reflective so we're gonna have to really focus on our angles here now something very cool we've covered this in a previous episode in the Rube Goldberg machines um, episode but we're gonna just re um, recall it here so we make sure it's nice and fresh in our brains so when you hit um, when you have a reflective surface if you hit something at an angle and that's called our angle of incidence this angle that it comes off is going to be the exact same and that's called our angle of reflection so for example if I go and hit my laser into the mirror at a 45 degree angle it's going to reflect off of a 45 degree angle so Katie I hope you're listening because that's a huge hint to what we're going to be needing to set up here for our little obstacle course game you bet I am Mackenzie so just as Mackenzie said, we have to be working with different angles here. So I thought for my first challenge, I was going to take it a little bit easier and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to hit my target with one mirror. So of course the easiest thing would be to go and hit my target just with that, but that's, that's not fun. We want to learn about angles here. So what I've done is I have uh, put a little barrier here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up my mirror so that it kind of rests on my barrier there. Okay. Nice. Nice so shot. now if I went and I shone the target on here, nothing is going to be popping up because why? It's coming right back at me. It's not going on my target yet, which means that I have the wrong angle with my mirror right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually angle this mirror a little bit more. So then when I go ahead and I shine that, that laser, then I should be seeing it on my target when I shine it. Okay, so obviously I still don't have the right angle. I think your laser might just be a little bit faint. I, I think so too, because yeah. I, I can't even, oh, there we go, okay. Okay, so. The angle looks like it's pretty good to me. Yeah, I know. I think, I, I think I've got something over here. I'm trying to do something similar. So I'm going to start with the one mirror as well and then move on. So if I shine it here, you can see that I'm going to pick it up on my... Oh, I'm Whoa. picking it up on my face Careful. right now. And I want to... It's on my arm. Oh, I saw that. Yep. Now it's I so want to get it on my target. There it is, okay. Oh, nice. But I need to get it closer to my target, so I might have to move it around. Oh, can I do it? Ah. Uh, wow. There it is. Mackenzie, that was amazing. But I'm only using one mirror. I'm going to challenge myself to try <laughs> to hit it. So I'm going to need to hit it right there. So I'm going to make me make a little mark. Okay, Mackenzie, as you do that, I have some exciting news uh -oh. over here. Okay. So you can see that I am hitting my target here. And I did this just with one mirror again, but I'm very close. So this is interesting because I'm the way that I'm wow. moving is not as if I was going to be targeting it right. So working with mirrors is a little bit tricky, but you can see there I'm hitting my target right there. So that's again only with one mirror. But you know this this whole thing makes me think just how like complicated the eye is with all these different angles and how interesting it is that our eye and brain can work together to deal with all these sort of things and i even heard that when we're actually looking at an image we're like looking at it upside down and then our brain is the one that interprets it and puts it right side up and helps us to perceive things in the right way and of course perception is both a good thing and it can be a bad thing as well we're going to be learning a little bit more about perception later in the episode as well but our brains of course are the ones that are able to make sure we're turning these images the right way and that we're truly looking at what we are looking at if that makes sense cole does that make sense that does make sense katie thank that and again every for which with, with every passing moment i'm learning more and more about how the eye and the brain work together in tandem to create a sense of vision now katie got her um laser pointer bang on that target mackenzie is is trying a different method let's look over at mackenzie and see how she's doing with her laser pointer mackenzie how are things going over there well i'm c creating quite a quite a racket yes over here. a bit of a ruckus um i'm trying to get the right angle so what i've done is i knew exactly where i needed to hit my 
laser on this mirror but I couldn't see it very well because when it was reflecting off it was coming somewhere over here so I thought that to add my second mirror I know exactly I need to hit it right there so I was practicing and then I can see it on my other piece of paper and I know the camera you can kind of see it there so mm -hmm. I think I know I need to hit this mirror right in this corner here so I think if I take this off now I might be kind of close to my target because I want it to bounce off here to here to here it's going to bounce. You really Sherlock Holmes this. Yes. I'm serious about this. Oh. Can I do it? Again, I have bad eyes, so if I don't hey, see it, that might working, just be Hey, it's working. It's working. I'm starting to get something over there. So it takes... It's a very um, tedious process. It takes some time because there's all these angles, and this is what's happening in our eye. I can kind of see it there. So, Mackenzie, I have a question. Okay. Um, what would, in this demo, what would the target that you're trying to hit, what does that kind of represent? Does that represent something? Yes, so that's our retina. Oh. Okay. So we're trying to hit our retina so that once it hits that retina, we have those images focused, and then we can set it, send those images back up to our brain mm -hmm. through the optic nerve so that we can make sense of what we're seeing. Excellent. And I just want to try this again. Give I think it one I'm more shot. I can actually see the laser pointer on the curtain <laughs> behind you right now. Oh, so uh, maybe I need to move it over here. And now here. it's on your left arm. Here we go. Okay, okay, we're on to something here. I think this I had is, this. There's the ruckus again. I think the ruckus made my Bring laser in the ruckus. switch. Oh. Okay. oh! Look at you go. Okay, okay, I'm on to something. Oh, I you're think oh so you're still trying to do a two-mirror setup Oh, here. yes, of course. Oh, goodness, look at that. It's happening. <gasps> Mackenzie, it's this happening. is big. Yes. Yay. It happened. We did it. We did it. It's so great. So if I were to trace the angle here, it's hitting here there and then there so that is exactly what's happening those angles of incidence and those angles of reflection are so important so that we can make sure that we're focusing and sending that image right to that retina so it can go up through that optic nerve that is just positively fascinating Mackenzie thank you so much for showing that now all of this talk about reflections and refraction it's got me thinking a lot about water I like to spend a lot of time out in the creek behind my house and I, I, do, I do I fish there but I don't fish I don't fish like normal uh, with a fishing rod or anything I just try to grab the fish with my bare hands and, and uh, I haven't been very successful mm -hmm. thus far because every single time I look in the water and I see a fish I grab for it right where it is but then it seems like the fish is actually a little bit further away I don't understand why that's happening can anybody explain that yes Cole actually that is also a problem that I was having and so what I did is I did a little bit of research into uh, angles of inci incidence but also refraction so refraction is what happens when light passes through one medium and then changes into another type of medium so I have a little bit of a demonstration I wanted to show everybody here and I know what you're thinking Katie what spectacular thing are you going to do with a jar of water and a pencil well let me show you so what we're going to do is you can even follow along uh, with us at home if you want we're going to go ahead and we're just going to stick this pencil into this water now what is happening because when i'm looking at this i don't see just a straight line i see this part of the pencil and then i see this part of the pencil is kind of moved over it's did like a little bit bigger did you cut the pencil in half with the water you know cole i know that's what it looks like but no i am actually not a magician this is exactly what is demonstrated when you try to go fishing so oh. when we put this pencil in it refracts and what happens is it actually moves a little bit over and that's because the pencil looks different when it's in air versus when it's in water so when you're seeing the fish when you're looking at it from the air but you're looking at the fish in the water it's going to be a different uh, location when, than what you're actually looking at and so again another one of the wondrous things that our eyes mm. does for us as it helps to uh, refract the light in our eyes so that we're actually seeing what we are seeing yeah that is that helps so much i think now that i know that maybe i can start to adjust my attack when i'm going after those trout in the creek uh and I can and I can finally bring bring a trout home for Mama. Wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd wouldn't be that great. Be just, that oh. would be fantastic. This finally. makes me think. I went fishing uh, a couple weekends ago, and I saw this fish. I was reeling it in, and it just looked ginormous. Like it mm. must have been record breaking. But when it got to my like, I went to take it out of the water, and it slipped. It, it went away. Oh, no. mm. But I swear it was probably like the biggest fish ever. No one believed me, but maybe what I was seeing was refraction. It Probably definitely could have been McKenzie. in the water because I didn't actually get it out of the water. So that's, yeah. that's it. Well, at least I know where my fishing story came from. There you go. That makes that's starting to make a lot of sense now. But there's another 
I don't know if it's necessarily a problem, but another thing that I've noticed with my vision is that in certain areas of my vision, depending on where I'm looking and depending on where objects are, I almost can't see them. It's like I have a blind spot in certain areas. Do you, do you know what that is? Do you know how to explain that? Yeah. So there is something called a blind spot in our vision. And a lot of times, unless we're like specifically testing for it, we might not even notice it. And that's because our brain and our eyes perception doesn't like when there's these little blank spots in them. But what we're going to do today is we're going to, you can follow along, you just need a blank piece of paper and maybe a marker, or pen, pencil, something to write on that piece of paper. We're going to find our blind spot. So what we're going to do is I just have a lovely um, blank piece of paper here. And what we're going to do is on one side, we're going to, I'm going to use a black marker. I think that'll work best. So just a dark color will work great. Um, in the middle of it, just on the side, so just about right here, I'm going to draw a black circle. Just about this big. It doesn't um, matter a whole lot. And then directly across from it, about, I'd say, equal length from the side, I'm going to draw a plus sign. Just like this. So your paper should look like this when you're ready to do the test. Now to do our test, what you're going to do is you're going to hold the paper out in front of you and you're going to close one eye. So I'm going to close my left eye, so the side that has that um, dot on it. So I'm going to close my eye and very slowly I'm going to stare at the blank, or sorry, the black spot and I'm going to slowly bring it close to my face, just noticing exactly when that plus sign disappears. Now, if you go, so I'm going to do it, right there I don't see a plus sign, I just see the dot. So I really didn't need to move it that much. And then if I move it closer again, I can see that plus sign again. So this is our blind spot. So for a second there, you can actually see that plus sign. So basically what's happening, if I were to like kind of graph it per se, you can see it. This is like going across time. Then there's a second where I can't see it. And then I can see it again. So this little blip here, you can't see it. But if you were to do it like this and go really fast, it seems like you can see it the whole time. And that's because our eyes do something really crazy and they just fill in that spot and they just assume that it must always be there. They they know that it can't just disappear. So rather than telling us in our brain, oh, it disappeared for a second and then it reappeared because we know that that can't happen if you put marker on a paper, it fills that section in and it kind of hides our blind spot. But if you do it very slow and steady, you can find exactly where your blind spot is for each of your eyes. And it might be a little bit different from eye to eye. So if you just flip your piece of paper and shut the other eye, you can test that one as well. That is very interesting, Mackenzie. So just to confirm, the, the plus sign is not actually disappearing, right? Right, cool. That is not what's happening. It's just a little blank in your vision. Mm. Hmm. Very cool. You know what, Mackenzie? As you were doing that, I was also kind of experimenting over here. I didn't have any paper, so I decided just to use my thumb. So you can go ahead and follow along with me at home as well if you want to. What we're going to do is we can also see our blind spot uh, without drawing those things. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close my left eye and I'm going to use my right thumb. So it's whatever is the opposite one. So if you close your right eye, then use your left thumb. If you close your left eye with me, then you can use your right thumb. What we're going to do is we're going to stick our thumb out and then we're just going to slowly again, because Mackenzie uh, said that we need to go slowly here. We're going to slowly bring it, uh, our thumb towards us and we're going to find our blind spot here. So my blind spot is right here. So basically what I'm seeing is that my thumb is like gone. And again, it's not actually gone. I didn't just lose a thumb in that period of time. But what I'm seeing right now is that I have no, like the top of my thumb is not there. And that's actually where our blind spot is as well. And it's not way out here. It's not right in front of us. But if you stare right in front and then you bring s your thumb slightly closer to you, I'm still looking at front, but I can see my thumb out of my peripheral vision, meaning that it's not in my central gaze, but I can kind of see it off to the side. The top of my thumb is actually missing. So you can go ahead and you can try that at home as well. It should be just a little bit outside of your vision line and let us know if it worked because it's actually a really, really cool uh, thing to do. I'm trying it. Katie, I don't, it's, I, I, uh, that's scary.
<laughs> I thought that my thumb was gone there for a second, but this is starting to jog my memory about how all of this stuff works, how the eye is connected to the brain, and I believe it's through something called the optic nerve, right? Yes. Optic nerve, does that sound familiar? That's mm -hmm. right. Now, from what I can recall, if I go to my l handy dandy um, drawing board over here, uh, a really, really interesting thing happens in the brain with the optic nerve. Now, I have a diagram here. It's <laughs> not a great diagram. The brain kind of looks like, oh, a potato or something. <laughs> That's okay. It's the Couch Potato Lab after all. Now, this is a top-down view of the brain. So uh, on the far right side here, you have our two eyes, okay? So here's our left eye, and here is our right eye, conveniently labeled. Now, this back part of the brain that I sort of outlined in pink is called the occipital lobe. Now, all, y all you need to think of for the occipital lobe is that's sort of where the, the vision actually goes. Like the light that comes in, travels down our op uh, optic nerve and goes to the occipital lobe. And that's where we start to think about the things that we're actually seeing, we, where we actually picture them. All right. But here's a very, very interesting thing. If we go back to the diagram here, what you'll notice is this is the optic nerve for the left eye and this is the optic nerve for the right eye. And what you'll notice is it actually crisscrosses. So you see this blue line from the left eye, that's our optic nerve there, and that will crisscross and will actually end up on the right side of the brain. And the same thing for the right eye. The optic nerve from the right eye will crisscross and un end up at the left side of the brain. So this process is called lateralization. So the information from our right eye actually ends up being received at the left side of our brain and the information from our left eye is the opposite. It gets received at the right side of our brain. And there's actually a lot of different senses that this um, applies to. So the same thing with our hearing. We get sound that comes in through our right ear. It's going to end up eventually on the left side of our brain and vice versa with the other ear. So it's kind of an interesting thing. You would not You would think that maybe the more direct path would just be go right to the right and left to the left. But there's lots of instances where our brain sort of loops over and crosses over. And again, this process is called lateralization. So very, very interesting. All right. So Cole was talking about how, you know, our vision is connected to the brain and they all seem to be working together. And that is true. In fact, there's a lot of other things that work together and that our vision kind of affects. So I'm just going to do a little experiment here to kind of demonstrate this. So I'm just going to step out in front here. So I'm going to um, do a little experiment with my balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin around really, really quick, like three or four times. And then I'm going to try to walk in a straight line. Okay. 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 Sounds good. All right. So one, oh my two, oh She's going to take three, off. Three, four. You must be a dancer, Mackenzie. I am, in Whoa. fact. Okay. Not bad. A little yeah. shaky, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to come back over here. This time, I'm going to blindfold myself. Whoa. So this if I get into any hot water over here, if I'm going to run into something. We better move that big pail of hot water off the floor. Yeah. yeah. Don't step then in And you that. just let me know. So same thing. I'm going to spin around. Three or four times. Please be careful, Mackenzie. I will. We don't <laughs> want to lose you. should tell the camera crew to back up. Here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. All right. One. Okay. I'm already two, worried. Three. Okay. Oh. Whoa. 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 Mackenzie. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So, um, I don't think I did as good. No, you were all over the place. Mm -hmm. I would barely even call that walking. I, it was more of just like a continual spin. Oh, really. okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So what was happening there is I couldn't see, and that's because our vision has a lot to do with balance. So it kind of gives us different clues and things like that. So we have like depth perception, all that is connected to our vision, and it helps us balance as well. So when your vision is off, it's really important to get that fixed so that you're kind of stable and nice and balanced as well. Hmm. That, yeah. that was really cool, Mackenzie. And you know what that made me kind of think of too is how our eyes have to work together to produce one image. So it's actually pretty cool how our right eye is seeing a complete image and our left eye is too. But what they do is we take like kind of a little bit of an image from both eyes and we put them together so that our brain perceives it as it really is. So if you wanted to, I'm gonna just go ahead and take my glass of water here. And if I look at this glass of water and then I look at it with my right eye shut and then I look at it with my left eye shut, it looks like this glass is actually moving, but it's not. And so what happens is you can see the two different images that our left eye sees and that our right eye sees, but they actually go together to form that one image. So I wanted to try also another little experiment. Feel free to follow along with me at home. I have a coin here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, catch it. I'm going to throw it up in the air and I'm going to catch it with both eyes open. Sounds pretty easy, right? Easy. Uh, hopefully I can do this. Good job, Very Katie. Good. That was perfect. Perfect. You nailed it. Thank you guys. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close one of my eyes and I'm going to tr try that again. Okay. 
Ready? Oh, oh. no, Katie. That was bad. <laughs> see. Exactly. It was kind of like what happened with Mackenzie when she uh, blindfolded herself. So I closed one of my eyes and I tried that again and I did not catch that coin. And that's because I was only looking through one eye. I was not getting that complete image and it was way harder for me to catch that coin. So that just shows the importance of both of our eyes working together. Yeah, I guess so. And something that I'm learning about eyes as we go through this is there's so much going on. They're so complicated that it must be really, really important to protect our eyes. Uh, I can only imagine that one way of protecting our eyes would be sunglasses. And I know, Katie, you actually have a very special pair of sunglasses that you're going to talk about. Mm -hmm, I do for sure. So I have these sunglasses and they're polarized. So this is one of the activities in the lab manual. If you want to go ahead and follow along with us, make sure that you have polarized pair of sunglasses because this is important for this activity. But we're, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take a clear dish or glass and we're going to take a flashlight or some sort of lamp, any sort of light source. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to angle this light source so that it's behind it so that when I am looking at this dish, I can see a glare off of that dish. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our polarized pair of sunglasses and I am going to be looking at this light from uh, this way. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these sunglasses horizontally. So I'm not going to put them on, I'm just going to hold them like this. And I can see, I can still see the light. Of course they're sunglasses so it's a little bit dimmer. But I can see uh, the light pretty good. It's, it's definitely darker. But now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to rotate these. And I can see that that glare, that light, is actually way brighter when I rotate them like this. So that just goes to show that direction is also a very, very important factor. So it is a lot darker when I do it like this versus like this. It's a lot brighter through these polarized sunglasses. So go ahead and give that a try at home as well. I think it's also a super interesting phenomenon. For sure. And if you do try it at home, we would love for you to let us know. You can text us a picture of your polarized sunglasses at 306-570-1013. Or you could tweet us a picture of your polarized sunglasses at the hashtag Couch Potato Lab on Twitter. And as always, make sure you're following us at Eyes Youth on a lot of different social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Now, we've learned that it is important to protect your eyes when you go out in the sun. It's summer right now. Just as it's important to put on sunscreen on your skin to protect your skin, it's important to put on a pair of sunglasses shades so you can protect your eyes. Now, part of the reason that we need to protect our eyes is because if we don't, they can get damaged and that can lead to a variety of different um, uh, what we call vision disorders. Now, there's lots of different disorders that could happen to your eye um, and that's why uh, we need glasses, for instance. But I'm going to talk about two types of disorders um, in particular. The first is called astigmatism. Now, an astigmatism is when your cornea, which is a part of the eye that Katie was talking about earlier in the show, an astigmatism is when your cornea sort of gets deformed. And remember, part of the job of the cornea is to help focus the light on the right part of the eye. Now, if the cornea is deformed or if it's not sh shaped correctly, it's going to focus um, the part on a part of the eye that we don't want. It's not going to hit the retina and we will have trouble seeing. So when we um, get glasses, if you have glasses, you might have glasses for a lot of different reasons. Uh, gl uh, glasses, I'm just going to show, take out my little bag of tricks here. Here are some lenses for ju from just a common pair of glasses. Now, the way that these work is exactly the same as the lens that is actually inside of our eye. Now, uh, these glasses lenses are going to help us focus the light onto the correct part. So again, the cornea, when it's damaged, it can't really focus the light through the lens in a proper way. So these lenses help to put point the light sort of in the right direction so that it's hitting the retina and we can see a lot clearer. Now, another problem that you might um, experience with your eyes is something called cataracts. Now, cataracts are um, a disorder that happens inside the actual lens of our eye. Now, normally, if I, I've got some uh, translucent, uh, what is this called? Plastic wrap uh, here. <laughs> so let's pretend that this is the lens of our eye and it's kind of like a little ball. and it's it's clear. I know that because I bunched it up. It doesn't look like it's clear, but it's it's very clear. It's made of, of transparent material. Light can pass through this really, really easily, okay? So this is what our eye should normally look like, a ball of plastic wrap. But if we have a cataract, what that means is inside our eye, we are going to have sort of something that's a little bit more opaque, which just means that it's not translucent. It doesn't allow light to pass through. So for instance, this is my, might be our lens 
if we have cataracts. Again, this tin foil here, the aluminum foil, isn't really letting light through it. It's going to bounce off and it's going to be, again, really, really hard to see. So this is why we need glasses or contact lenses or we can even get corrective eye surgery, like laser eye surgery, um, to help uh, combat some of these problems. So we have lenses and glasses, but Katie, there, Katie actually has a very, very cool lens that you might have seen around your house um, if you need to read very, very small things. What is that type of lens called, Katie? Mm -hmm, for sure I do. So what I'm holding right now is a magnifying glass. And what these things do is they allow you to see something kind of blown up or bigger. So we're just going to switch to this camera here. And I wanted to show you all, I wrote something here, but if we're looking, I really can't see that. I and have no so idea what that says. Exactly. And so if if I want to go ahead and I want to read what this says here, I'm going to go and I'm going to take my magnifying glass and I'm just going to find that right spot where I can see what that says. So there's a little bit of a shadow on it that oh. I can't really get rid of, but that's okay. I think we'll still be able to yeah, see. I, I did see, see it, it for a second there. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Cool. Oh yeah. That's a lot better. Yeah. It's definitely <laughs> bigger. <laughs> it is bigger. It is bigger. Now take it away really fast. Oh yeah, way oh, bigger. Mm -hmm. What if you went from the other side, Katie? Okay. Would that help? I don't yeah. know. Maybe. Let me let me try it here. Okay, so we're, we're gonna solving. go ahead and there. So we still can't see it. No. So now let's use this magnifying glass. Oh. oh there we go. Okay, so there we go. We can see I said hello and now I'm gonna take it away. Wait, way bigger. I have no idea what that says. Yeah, exactly. So uh, magnifying glasses is also a really cool thing uh, that you're able to see smaller writing in smaller images. Very interesting, Katie. Now, that we, we talked a little bit about eye disorders, actual physical problems with our eyes, but I know that there are not necessarily problems with our eyes, but sort of tricks that our eyes can play on us sometimes, even if our eyes are working completely normally. Mackenzie, do you know more about this? Yes, of course. So we've talked so much about vision, and when we're kind of trying to interpret what these um, images and these things that we're seeing are, we call that our perception. So visual perception is your skill and your ability to make sense of the things that you're seeing and your different surroundings but sometimes there's errors in our perception and that doesn't mean that there's something going wrong with, with our eyes it just means that our interpretation or our perception of those images kind of went off a little bit so when there is a little bit of a disconnect between reality so what is actually there and what we're actually seeing and our perception we call that an optical illusion. Now, there's three main types of optical illusions. So the first one is a literal optical illusion. And a literal optical illusion, optical illusion, it's kind of a tongue twister, is when our perception creates images that aren't actually there, or maybe they're a bit smaller or bigger, or they're just different. And there's different images that can cause this to happen, so that's one type. Now the second type is a physiological optical illusion, and these are a result of excessive stimuli. So when, it's, when there's a lot of something, so if it's really, really bright or really, really colorful, sometimes that just there because there's so much we have a little bit of an air in what we're seeing so that's a physiological optical illusion and then the last one is a cognitive optical illusion and this one is when we're using our unconscious inferences and they kind of influences what we're seeing in the wrong way so maybe we expect to see something and it um, kind of tricks us to s what we're actually seeing and scientists are really really interested in studying these cognitive optical illusions because they give us an idea of what we're doing like what our brain is doing to make sense and how it's working to put all of these different things together so we're very very interested in these cognitive optical illusions and there's actually a lot of different types of cognitive optical illusions um, within that one specific category as well yeah, and I think actually Katie brought her very own optical illusion in real life for us to look at. Katie, what do you have there? Mm -hmm, I for sure did, Cole. So if you wanted to make this at home, uh, you don't need a whole bunch of fancy tricks. You can actually do this just with a piece of paper and some pencil crayons. But what I did is I created my own optical illusion. So here it is here. And you can see that it looks like my hand is actually kind of 3D. It's popping out of that paper. And how I did this is I made, uh, I traced my hand, I made some straight lines but then when I made the lines on the hand I kind of bubbled them over a bit so that it looks 3d so you can see that we created our own optical illusion it looks as though my hand is 3d it looks as though it is kind of popping out of the paper but in real life of course it's not it's just 
2D, it's flat. So you can create your own optical illusion at home as well, and that is in the lab manual. Yeah, I would say that that is a literal optical illusion because mm. our hand is not actually <laughs> literally 3D, it just looks like it. So it's creating an image that's not actually there. Interesting. Now, Mackenzie and Katie, I actually have a little bit of a test for you. I have um, with me on my computer some interesting optical illusions, and I want to see if we can try to figure out what's going on with them when we take a look. Okay, so we've got a couple of different types of illusions, and I want you to sort of just look at them and tell me what you see, or maybe we can together figure out how it works. Okay, okay? sounds good. So yeah. here's our first optical illusion. Now, this one's really interesting. Uh, Katie, what do you see in that image? Uh, this is so easy, Cole. I don't know how you're saying this is an optical illusion. I just see two people that are facing each other. What, Katie? Interesting. No. No, I see a vase, like a flower vase that you would put in like a bouquet of flowers oh. or something. So you see a vase and you see two faces. Well, what if I told you that you actually see both? Now, yeah. it really just depends on our perception. I know, that's crazy. But um, depending on how you look at an image like that, you might see a white vase in the middle in that negative space, or you might see two faces facing each other. So that is what we call an ambiguous illusion where depending on the person, depending on how you're looking at it, you might see something different. Huh. So there's an optical illusion. Here's another one that I have for you. This is a, a really interesting one. Okay. Now, I want you to tell me out of, uh, you see a sort of almost like looks like railroad tracks there. Yeah. Now yep. there's two yellow lines on those railroad tracks. Uh, Katie, which of those yellow lines is longer or are they the same size? Oh, well, of course they're not the same size. It's quite obvious that the yellow line that is farther away is bigger. Like, I'm looking at it with my own eyes, mm. and I can see that that yellow line, the one that's farther away, is the bigger yellow line. Interesting. Uh, Mackenzie, what do you think? You know, Cole, I have to agree because it's it looks way bigger, for sure. I can't even disagree. So, this is a very, very interesting optical illusion because be due to how the... Um, image is set up, it looks like one of the lines is actually bigger. But what if I told you, and we'll show in a, in a second here, this new image. If we take that image and we put two red lines next to those yellow lines, what? you'll That's see crazy. that they're actually the exact same length. Okay. Now again, the reason that this happens is has to do with our perception. It's our brain tricking us. Because the um, angles of those two parallel black lines look like the uh, yellow line over there is further away, we sort of imagine it to be bigger because it looks further away uh, due to those parallel lines um, kind of converging at the end and, and looking like a railroad track or something that is going away from us. Mm -hmm. So very, very interesting optical illusion here. Now here's another one. This is an interesting one. Now, um, I, there's not really a question that I have for this, but can you see the problem here? What Does this image look strange to you? Yeah, it, I don't know. It kind of looks 3D, but like that shape's not possible. So I would almost like, for instance, if you look at that gray part of the triangle, yeah. on the left side, it almost looks like it's on the outside of the triangle. Yeah. But right. on, the, on, on the other part of the gray, it's almost like it's in the inside of the triangle. That is crazy. Very interesting. Now, this image in particular is called the Penrose Triangle. And now this is a category of optical illusions called paradoxical optical illusions. Now, when we talk about paradoxical, what that means is a paradox is when it looks like two things are true at the same time, even though we know in our head that they're not. Now, just because of the way that that image is shaded with the different colors, light and dark, uh, we would think that it, it shouldn't look like that. There should be an ending, and the outside, obviously, we know in real life can't also be the inside of an object. But be just because the way that that image is colored, um, we see what is called a paradoxical illusion. Now, here's another one. This is a very, very interesting illusion that we have here. Now, what do you see here? Do, what do you see? How many, actually, I'll ask you this. How many triangles are in this image? Well, I see two triangles. There's kind of one in the middle, it's facing downwards, and then there's the other one that's facing upwards. So there's two triangles in this image. Two triangles. Mackenzie, how many triangles do you see? Yeah, I also agree. I think there's two triangles and three circles. Interesting, interesting. Now, what if I told you that there actually isn't really any triangles in there? Not complete triangles, at least. What we're seeing here is an illusion um, where we call, uh, we call a fiction illusion. Now, a fiction illusion is when an object is perceived even though it's not actually in the image. So oh. we can almost see like a triangle underneath and a triangle on top, but there really isn't anything there. It's just sort of um, three half-completed triangles and then some empty space on top. Now, because of those almost Pac-Man looking things, we think that there's a triangle on top, but really, there actually isn't. So again, huh. that's called a fiction illusion, which is a really, really interesting type of an illusion where we are perceiving something that's not actually there. Two more, two more optical illusions for you. 
All right. All right. Hey, we got to get these Mackenzie. Yes. Okay. Okay. Not doing too so now uh, this one is very, very easy. Looking at this image, what animal do you see? Katie, what animal do you see in this image? Oh, well, I see a duck. It's a, it's a duck and its neck is out of the water. A duck and uh, Mackenzie, what do you see? Um, a rabbit. A I rabbit. How would you get a duck out of that, Katie? I only see a rabbit. Well, That's you can see the beak. You know, it's facing to the left. You can see its eye. But you can see, you can see the ears of the rabbit and the nose. Very interesting. Mm. Now, what if I told you again, this was sort of like the illusion that we saw earlier with the vase and the two faces. What if I told you that it's actually a rabbit and a duck? It really, really just depends on how you look at it. Now, if I show you this new image where the parts of the rabbit or the duck have been colored in, oh my you goodness. can see, depending on your perspective, depending on, on your individual brain and how it's uh, viewing that image, you might see a duck. And we colored it like a duck on the left. Or you might see a rabbit. We colored it like a rabbit on the right. Wow. Hmm. So I guess I see what Mackenzie's seeing cool. now. Right, exactly. So you it all what? depends on how you perceive it. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of something because there's something in our um, perception that we call priming. And that's... Um, to do with if we kind of give our brain an expectation so you know this morning I was um, walking through the park and I saw a bunch of rabbits so I kind of have rabbits at the forefront mm. of my brain my brain is more likely to kind of pull that knowledge and say rabbit but maybe Katie the last thing she saw was a duck yeah you know what I actually was feeding ducks last night yeah so mm, if you prime your brain to kind of have an uh, like an idea of what you're about to see it kind of fast forwards to that so um, for example before the show I was showing Cole a picture of a person out in the rain with an umbrella and then I played a sound and he guessed that it was rain and raindrops but it was actually bacon sizzling that and that really messed me up I was like oh my goodness I can't believe that's possible but I, I was primed because I saw that picture of the of the fellow in the rain you got it well um, Mackenzie and Katie I have one more optical illusion to show you now this one is very interesting I just want you to look at this image mm -hmm. and do you notice anything weird about it is that an image or a video Cole? I, I promise on my honor as an eyes staff member that that is a static image it is not a video or anything like that yeah it definitely looks like i'm moving huh. yeah. you notice that too mackenzie yeah it definitely looks like it's moving i would have definitely assumed that that's a video now this is a very interesting image and how this works is when you stare at it long enough you should be able to notice this at home at well as well it almost looks like it the the it's rotating or it's moving and then the reason this is is just because how the image is structured the certain shapes colors and contrasts that are used in this image um, give the sense to your brain it triggers these motion sensors in our brain and our brain is starting to get confused and it's trying to understand what that image is actually supposed to be and in the process it just gets really really confused and it sees motion even though there isn't actually any motion there Huh. That's pretty crazy, eh? That is crazy. Now, if you have any optical illusions at home that you know, you can send us uh, your optical illusions. Maybe you create your own. You can text us at 306-570-1013, or you can tweet us using the hashtag CouchPotatoLab. And remember to follow us at EyesYouth on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. And you know what, folks? I think we, we're almost at the end of our episode. You know mm -hmm. what that means? I think I do, yep. That means it's time for our very se favorite segment, The Science. Showdown. Okay, in today's science showdown, we have a very, very special test that I'm going to be putting you through. It's a, it's a type of vision test, all right? Now, it's very, very simple. Um, Katie, you're going to start. Okay. All right? Now, on the screen, you are going to see um, a letter. And all you need to do is tell me which direction the open side of the letter is. So, uh, we're going to start off with the letter E. Okay. And you just tell me what, uh, what direction the open side of the E is. So let's see. We'll pull up this um, letter E here. Now, very simple. Katie, what uh, direction is the open side of the E facing? Well, this sounds pretty easy. So up. You're going to go with up. Yeah. So we will select up. How about now? Uh, I think it's pointing down. Yep. Down. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And, and now? Left. Left. Very uh -huh. good. How about now? Oh, it, it got a little smaller. It's a little smaller now. Um, I think it's down down okay how about now right right left left oh now it's super small i really like i'm having a bit of, uh, i would say it's probably pointing right you're gonna go with right yeah interesting how about now oh okay now it's down down and now it's back to right now it's back to right interesting 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 now um what we uh, noticed there katie is unfortunately towards the end you started get to get some of those wrong 
Oh, yeah. really? I, I thought I was getting everything right. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Katie, but there was actually those last few. You, you weren't uh, you weren't doing so so great. Uh, Yikes. They were not in the right um, order. I'm sorry. Oh so dear. what we're going to do is I'm going to get the test back up and running here. And I think, Mackenzie, do you want to give it a try? Yes, I would love to give okay. this a try. Yep. Give me two seconds while I get this. Am I doing the same one or a different you, one? You're going to do the same one. OK, I think. Sounds good. OK, so here we go. All right. Again, all you have to do is tell me what direction the letter is facing. Go all right. Ahead. Easy. Right. Right. Down. Down. Left. Left. Down. Down. Left. Left. Right. Right. Left. Left. Right. 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 There we go. Down. Down. Right. Oh, this is where Katie started to mess up. Are you sure? Right. Yeah. Right. Up. Up. Right. Right. Left. Left. Down. Down. Right. This is really small now. Yes. Up. Up. Left. Left. Right. Right. Okay. Well, um, Mackenzie, I, I, I'm I, very proud to inform you that you actually passed with flying colors 100% 100% on the vision test. That's what? right. Oh, 100%. my goodness. Now, normally in a science showdown, we would give an award to the winner. But actually today, we're giving an award to Katie, even though she didn't win. Katie, I'm going to put these here for you. Okay. I'm awarding you with an official eyes bag of carrots because everybody knows that you chomp on some carrots and your vision gets better. Right, Mackenzie? That's how it works. Cool. You know, that is a little bit of a myth because there's a little bit of, um, you know, something that's a little bit wrong with that claim. And that's because eating carrots can help to keep your vision healthy but it can't actually improve it. So there's a lot of vitamins um, in that carrot and that those vitamins help to keep our vision healthy, but we can't reverse the damage. So it doesn't make it better. It just helps keep it and maintain that good vision that um, we have. So Katie, if you want to make sure that your vision doesn't get any worse, you're going to want to eat those carrots. But unfortunately, unless you go see a optometrist or a doctor, you're going to need to go see them to make it better. The carrots are probably not going to do that for you. But it's still important to get your veggies in, so yeah, I would definitely sure. keep eating I appreciate them. you guys looking out for me. Well, and Mackenzie, you mentioned um, a special type of doctor that actually looks at our eyes, and that is the subject of today's STEM Spotlight. On today's STEM Spotlight, we would like you to meet Dr. Fazuda Aranguntala. She is an ophthalmologist in Saskatoon. Specifically, she does pediatric ophthalmology. That means she works with kids and their vision. Before she moved to Saskatoon in 2004, she worked with Orbis International to help underprivileged people around the world get education and treatment for their vision. As of 2020, she works with the University of Saskatchewan as a clinical professor. Excellent. That was a lovely STEM spotlight. Now we're almost at the end of our show and we started the show talking about how my vision wasn't improving. It wasn't very good. Katie, do you actually have something now that we're at the end that I could used to make my vision better? Yes, I do, Cole. You know what? You really helped me by giving me this the, uh, the bag of carrots. Mm. I really appreciated that. And, you know, I've been kind of monitoring you throughout the episode, and I do think that you need a little bit of help with your vision. So I wanted to gift you your first pair of glasses ever. So I'm wow. going to go ahead. I'm, I'll yes. put this on the table here. And Are you, you sure? Grab that. Yeah, for sure. Should I put them on now? Mm -hmm. Yes. It was recommended by our uh, headquarters optometrist. Okay, well, They've let's been watching along and... They did an assessment. Yes. Here we go. Whoa. Katie McKenzie, this is amazing. Wow, can you see, Cole? Everything's I, clearer. Th I didn't even, I, I, there's cameras and lights. Can I, you see your script now? Is this show for real? Oh, it is. I, I'm on TV. This is amazing. Wow. I, I, I never even knew. I thought we were just doing this for fun. Oh my goodness, Wow, Cole. thanks, this is awesome. I, I'm gonna tell my mom, she's gonna be so excited to know. And you know what, actually, I, I, I can see something on my computer now. I can see that it's time for another one of our favorite segments, Ask a Scientist. <laughs> Welcome to Ask a Scientist. We, I, uh, now I've <laughs> I can see there's so many um, lovely questions f uh, filling in. I just have to uh, go like this, a little bit like this. Uh, we have a question coming in here for our scientist from none other than the Hayes brothers. And the Hayes brothers want to know, we talked about how our pupils get larger and smaller, but maybe we didn't explain exactly how that happens. So is there a muscle that makes the pupils larger and smaller? How does that work? 
Mm -hmm. Does anybody know? Yeah, of course. So there is that muscle. Um, Katie was talking about it before, and it's that colored part of your eye, and it's a muscle called the iris. And that iris is responsible for dilating and constricting to allow um, lots of light in or to keep light out. So I kind of like to think of it like if you're flexing your muscle, you're constricting it or you're letting it go. And the same thing happens with our iris. So if you walk out and it's really, really bright, that eye, that iris is going to constrict so that it doesn't let as much light in. And then if you go into a room that's darker than the room you were just in, it's going to go even bigger and dilate so it lets more light in. So they're trying to keep that just perfect optimal amount of light into your eyes so it adjusts to the different brightnesses in the rooms and the places that you are so if you move into a place that's really bright it's going to constrict and if you go into a place that's really really dark it's going to expand to let more light in so I hope that helps answer your question Hates Brothers um, so yeah that's all thanks to the iris muscle we have another question here one last question before we end our show uh, this question is coming in and it asks when I'm on a boat and feel sick why does my mom tell me to look at the horizon? Hmm. Katie, do you know the answer to that? I do. I can actually answer this because I also have the exact same problem. Hmm. Sometimes I get seasick. So what's happening there is your mind is confused because your body and your vision, they're not really lining up. So when you're looking at the ocean, sometimes it seems as though you're standing still. But really, when you're on a boat, of course, you're kind of rocking around. And so your mind doesn't like that because your vision and uh, your what your body is feeling is not lining up. So when we look at the horizon, we're actually going to use that as a reference point, And it's going to help to kind of... Uh, get that orientation uh, back in place so that you're not feeling that sick anymore. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Couch Potato Lab. We learned a lot. I got a new pair of glasses. We looked at some optical illusions. I think it was a fantastic show. And we've got more shows coming up this week that are also going to be fantastic. So make sure you head over to bit.ly slash Couch Potato Lab if you want to take a look at the lab manuals for uh, the other episodes that are coming up this week. We want to thank everybody for watching and sending in their questions as always. We also want to send a special thank you to the University of Regina and Actua for helping us put together the Couch Potato Lab. But until tomorrow, that is it for us today. So have a fantastic rest of your day and bye! bye.